Dwayne Lesno here. We're going to deploy an NC2 cluster on Azure. We're already logged into the NC2 portal. We have a cloud account already created, so we can get right into creating the cluster itself. You have two options, general purpose or VDI. VDI is if you have specific Nutanix VDI licensing. So we're just going to go with the general purpose. We're going to give our cluster a name. Call it hybrid cloud, Acme hybrid cloud, pick the Azure cloud provider. This shows up because we have our cloud account configured. We're going to deploy into West 2. I have an existing environment that I want to deploy into. And then uh, since there's only one available AZ there, that's the only option, so I'll hit next. Software licensing, uh, moving forward, all new clusters are going to be with the new NCI licensing. We did support AOS licensing. We pick our AOS version. We'll go with the latest AOS version. Uh, we'll go with Ultimate for the software tier. We see that advanced replication is included in the security tier. If we wanted to deploy files onto our cluster, we could check box check off that license as well, but we can always do that at a later date. Now, we're going to deploy a three node cluster. You could deploy up to a 28 node cluster. All of the RF rules apply just as they do as on-prem. As your cluster gets bigger, you'll be able to select RF3. We'll go back to a three node cluster. Two node clusters are not supported, but you could run a one node cluster for testing purposes. So we'll hit next. Now, most customers want to deploy into an existing environment, so that's what we'll show here. But the new VNet option or new networking option will do a lot of the groundwork for you if you're deploying new. We'll try to talk through some of the differences as we deploy our cluster. So existing VNet means that I already have my two base VNets already created, my VNet for my bare metal, and my VNet for Prism Central. So the only way uh, a subnet will show up here is if it's delegated to the hosted Azure bare metal service, which it is, so we'll hit next. Now we need Prism Central to have Flow Virtual Networking. The Prism Central is also deployed in its own VNet. So we're going to deploy a new Prism Central. We're going to leave it uh, at the small option, though you have large and extra large as well. Uh, pick your Prism Central version. You could change the default password, but we'll leave it the same. And then we have our PC VNet, which the reason that you need two is because you can only have one delegated subnet per VNet. So the management VNet and then our PC VNet, as you can see here, it's the only one that is uh, highlighted at the moment. We'll hit next. So there are multiple options for the connectivity uh, in conjunction with your flow gateway. The flow gateway provides north and southbound connectivity to the user VMs on the cluster. So I already have uh, a setup deployed using Azure VPN. And my environment is using uh, VWAN today, even though HA is not supported. Uh, I'm going to check this box off. Um, I just have it set up so my VPN is always configured and it helps me with doing a lot of different deployments. Now you can scale up and scale out your flow gateway VMs uh, with a small or large and then you can add up to four virtual machines. So that's a lot of bandwidth. Keep in mind that we're only consuming bandwidth from the user virtual machines. All of the CVM traffic in Prism Central sit outside of the, the flow gateways as far as traffic pattern goes. Now, when deploying in this type of configuration with the flow gateway, we can, you could have different uh, resource groups because your uh, Azure route server, which gets used for this environment, could be in a different subscription. 
So our flow gateway VNet is going to be the same as our management. Now, this would have to be different if we, were, if we weren't using a, a VWAN. We would actually have to have a separate flow gateway VN due to some uh, Azure VPN HA settings along with the route server. So here uh, we have the flow gateway subnets. There's an internal and external. The internal is going to be where our transit VPC connects as the endpoint. Um, so this is not used by anything with uh, outside of Azure. Now the flow gateway external subnet is where we can grab floating IPs for our user virtual machines in an added environment. And we select an additional subnet for BGP so we can exchange routes between our environment and the route server. So we have a subnet already created. Now, as mentioned, the route server could be in a different subscription. For me, it's in the same one. And it should pick up the deployed virtual WAN already in my environment. And then we pick uh, some security keys for if we need to SSH into the flow gateway virtual machines. So I already have uh, an existing setup, so I'll use this key. We'll hit next. You get a nice little readout of the environment. And we'll hit create. Now we'll come back once this is finished. Uh, it does take from three to four hours. It's a bit slower than AWS because Prism Central is also required and we don't have pre-built AMIs that speed up the process like AWS has. So those are the main differences for the difference in times, but adding nodes into the environment is not going to take that long. So we'll come back as soon as this is wrapped up. Our cluster is finally up and running. We can go take a look at the resources, if we go click on network, we can see our networking information, the IP of the Prism element, Prism Central fully deployed. We can see the virtual IP and all of the hosts that make up Prism Central, along with our flow gateway information. And our flow gateways along with our BGP VMs have been fully deployed. And if we need to, could go always add more hosts, update capacity, and add an additional one. Our cluster is deployed. We're ready to deploy workloads on top of it. Thanks for watching.